shoes. Well, Gary, we have another unexpected package. Now, I thought it was Anbernick, but Anbernick doesn't deliver on Saturdays. Uh, they usually use FedEx, and this came with the regular mail. So either this is a true surprise, or steady. Anbernick has changed their ways. But we will find out shortly, won't we? Is this Pal Kitty? They've been using packages like that, I don't know. Oh, it's Anbernick. Whip. Get out of the way. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? Ooh, <laughs> the 405V in this super cool. Ooh, hmm, hmm, I like that. It's got room for the sizable booty of this handheld. Huh, that's a cool case. Doesn't smell as bad as the other ones. Some people in the comments say, Zoo, don't sniff the uh, cases they send you. Don't sniff the vents. Don't do that. It's bad. There's VOCs. There's, there's volatile compounds. And I say, I don't know what that means, so it can't hurt me, right? Let's see what color we got. Now, this is from Anbernick. I didn't buy it. They sent it to me for free because they love them some Zoo reviews. So I don't know what it is. I know it's a 405V. I don't know what color it is. What? <clears throat> Oh, the whole thing comes out. Okay. Wipes. SD card, what they give us? 128 gigabytes? Looks like a somewhat decent brand. I usually just swap in my own, but... Eh. Ooh, a screen protector. Put that on later. A ubiquitous USB-C power slash data cable. And a color manual. To get the information across, it's one page. It's cheat sheet. Quick start guide. Some of these other ones, they give you 75 pages. You're never going to read it either way. There's a little circle on here cut out for the, uh, the exhaust fan. I don't know if that's necessary. Oh, it's jammed in there. Ooh, ooh, ooh it's wood. <laughs> it's wood. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Let's. Uh, hmm, hmm. Wait a minute. Here it is next to the 351V. Boy, that's, that doesn't look like it was cut from the same pretend tree, but it's pretty close. That's ergonomic. I like it. These these butt grooves just feel nice in the hand. I like this fake end of a a tree. Like they, they cut the tree like this. But it's out of scale, but whatever. It's very ergonomic. That is very ergonomic. These these grooves, the booty on this thing, your hands just go down there. And there's like a little gap down here. Just just notched out for your pinkies. Like that. A little, your pinky just naturally goes into there. That's kind of smart. It's odd looking. It has a little face. You can't really see as much uh, with this, but when you put this guy on, he's very serious. He's not the happy RG20S. No, no. He's seen some stuff. But these two little start and select buttons kind of makes it look like uh, like SpongeBob, Pencil Bob. So you have your, your back home button on the front, your D-pad, these two tiny... Oh, are they tiny? They're about the same size as like a switch stick. They're nicer half sticks. Got start and select. Ooh, that's mushy. I like that. You got some. Feels like a Game Boy. Regular Game Boy. Y, X, A, and B. Skittle buttons. Skittle buttons don't necessarily jibe with the rest of the design. Maybe I'll replace them. Maybe just black buttons to match this. Uh, on the back, if you're R1, R2, L2, L1, and they're at a slight bevel, and they're raised, and they're different sizes, and these kind of jut out. Compare these to the 351V, or the... 353V, it's almost like they they saw better buttons and they said, you know what, that's a good idea, let's just do that. There's the the fan, it looks like the exhaust comes out here, the fan draws in from there maybe? You have two downward firing speakers, I think, on the bottom. You have your SD card and your uh, toggle button, toggle between the Android build or the Anbernic front end. You have power on the side, volume up, volume down, nothing on top for a status light, and one USB port. Not only has the one SD card, so you're not going to be able to, you know, put an OS in and then have your games. It's all going to be on that one card, which is fine. The 405M has certainly done well with just the one. But if you were expecting two, like the 353 line, ain't here. Before I start turning buttons on, let's see how she looks in the case. Ooh, that's custom molded, man. There's not much room. You might be able to get, like, a headphone 
thing of headphones, maybe a SD card pack in there. That's about it. I don't know if the case is going to come with the base model, but uh, mine came with a case. It's pretty cool. It just saves me from going to buy an 8 or $10 generic one on Amazon. Now we're going to drop this video, hopefully, uh, first thing in the morning on Labor Day, at the same time that this goes for sale. In the first 48 hours, they're going to sell it for about $130. After that first 48 hours, about $138. And I got to tell you, <laughs> if this sucker is anything like the 405M, that's a really good price. Who knows? Oh, no. You know, I just noticed there's a little imperfection on my B. <laughs> oh, well probably gonna replace these skittle buttons anyway before we turn around let's do some actual comparisons so here is the 405 v and here is uh the 351 v they're about the same width you can set them next to each other this is thicker overall but it has a very similar profile very similar height it's a little bit shorter this to me is is ergonomically extremely sound and so this with the addition of you know kind of these tapered grips and these little pinky holes and you know all these ergonomic pluses you know with with a bigger screen <laughs> uh, and then we have it next to the 353v you can see this guy is much bigger Shit. you can see this guy is much bigger and then just for s's and g's next to an original dmg I think I might do a video where I clean this up. This is all crap stickers Nintendo Power sent me when I was a boy. I mean, it's very similar. I feel like where this is going to either shine or fail is button placement. It, it got some Goldilocks here. These sticks, super low. This stick, a little bit higher. And this stick, higher than that. So I honestly, I don't know. Is this is this going to be better? Is this Because this was okay. But uh, eh, hmm, hmm, hmm. we'll see. Well, let's put the SD card in and then turn this son of a, son of a gun on, huh? We always recommend you get your own SD card, but, uh, you know, these Ambernic ones have gotten a little bit better. I haven't, you know, knock on wood, haha, <laughs> uh, I haven't had one die on me yet. It seems to me like it's it's probably your, if this is going to be your forever handheld or your next year and a half handheld, just go get like a 256 card or heck, even a 512 from a reputable source. And if you want, copy the ROMs that came with this or just source your own from your legal backups or what have you. Uh, but uh, heck, enough talking. Let's turn this sucker on. I gotta tell you, just holding it. Ah! Shh! Turn that down. There's our girl. Just holding it, it's very ergonomic. We're gonna configure the system here. Do some sped up animation with some cool music. And we're back. What do I click? Click that, yes. Ship with a full battery. I like that, Google Play is turned on. All right. I'm going to pause for station identification while I set up my Wi-Fi and Google Play and all that jazz. You're listening to Zoo's Reviews. All right, as I was going through the settings, let's see if I can get this to show. I don't have a fancy camera. It's just my phone. You can see real faintly, steady, real faintly around the text, like where it says eye comfort. There's like a little halo. And that means that that screen sharpening issue, you can see it on some of the other ones, that screen sharpening issue has not been addressed in this build. Now, Gamma fixes it, so it's not a big deal. It would have been nice to see them fix it, but what, what, are, you, what are you gonna do? I honestly wasn't super sensitive to begin with, so it's not a huge deal for me, but I know some people were concerned about that, some people didn't like that, so I figured I'd let you know that, at least on this one, it doesn't seem like they fixed it. All right, so I put on uh, everyone's favorite front end, Daiji Show, and uh, we're just gonna go through, uh, do some 3DS. What do we got? What's it come with? 3DS isn't ideal. We're running at around 30 FPS. Which is probably not great for a platformer. We can get RPGs on here to run somewhat decently. Steady. Now this is a 640 by 480 screen, which is 4 by 3. It's not the best for uh, a dual screen kind of situation. If you can find games that will run primarily on one screen, you, you might have an okay time. 3DS, I wouldn't buy it for 3DS, you know what I mean? You can run some games, but uh, it's more of a bonus. But that's okay. I just wanted to try it out on this screen, really. I mean, I knew what it could do. I just wanted to see what it did on the screen. All right. Let's do some Dreamcast. It only comes with four, but that's okay. Let's try, oh boy. Oh, Crazy Taxi 2. Dreamcast should run fine on here. I mean, it should run amazing on here. What I'm really looking for is this 640 by 480 screen, this 4 by 3 screen. It's ideally suited. There's, there's, you know, very little bezeling at all. Any of those 4x3 systems are going to look amazing on here. I don't know how to use the brakes. 
Aw. It's not... It's not good enough. Dang it! Gary, I really thought I had a career as a taxi driver. Obviously, Dreamcast is going to play great on here, and it's going to look beautiful because this has a beautiful screen, and the aspect ratio, like I said, you know, ideally suited for Dreamcast. It also kind of has a Dreamcast aesthetic to it. Maybe not the wood grain. I don't remember the wood grain Dreamcast, but otherwise it has kind of a rounded, ergonomic, futuristic kind of deal. So let's get out of here. Game Boy games, sure. It looks like a Game Boy. Let's play Game Boy games. Carabunga! <laughs> There's something aesthetically pure about playing a Game Boy game, even one at this giant size on a device like this. It's just aesthetically pure. Pizza time. The turtle boys don't cut no slack. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was in a half shell. Turtle power. Now, obviously, you're going to have some bezeling on the top and bottom for Game Boy Advance games. But this screen is beautiful. It gets, this is as bright as it gets. So it's it's the same as the 405M. It's real, real good for playing in bed. You can barely even see that. It's it's low brightness is real low. It's high brightness is okay. Probably wouldn't, uh, you know, try to play this outside at noon. It looks beautiful. And it's, you know, the chip itself is strong enough to put all sorts of shaders on. You have no problem with Game Boy Advance. Sega and Super Nintendo are gonna be amazing on here just because it takes up the whole screen. This screen is four inch screen, very well suited for Super Nintendo and Genesis games. Hey. Crap. <laughs> Try some Super Nintendo. I mean, the speakers being where they are, I haven't had an issue with the sound. I also like that the Headphone jacks on the bottom. Nice. Fan is running unnecessarily. I have it set to run at cool mode. It's very, very quiet. I don't know if it's draining the battery considerably. It's at 88. We were at 100 when I started. Pretty polished little guy here. Speaking of a polished guy, Final Fight guy. Oh, boy. I won't be Hagar instead. I have a mustache. I have one suspender for my green pants. I feel a kindred spirit with this fella. I punch people in the crotch. Headbutt them. Okay. This is a sweet little SNES Sega Genesis machine. But it's got some power under the hood. So we're going to try some GameCube and some PlayStation 2. So let's see what we got in here. Ridge Racer is my jam. Well, not the game. Just the music. Kind of like Persona 5. Now, GameCube is a system... I feel like more is running on this chipset now than it did when it first came out. And uh, we might continue to add. How do I, what button drives? This, yes. But yeah, GameCube I feel like is improving by leaps and bounds. There's gonna be a finite limit. With some of these versions of Dolphin, you can do sub 1X resolution, and you can really kind of expand the library. Drive right into the wall, that's how you win the race. Get dunked on, Aoki. Booyakashaka! One of the cool things about, and it's the same with the 405M, this back button up here acts as like a built-in shortcut button for these higher-end emulators. So let's just leave. And let's try Wind Waker. Now, I don't know who, I forget who was talking about it on the, the live stream for this, but they said, I think it was, was it Joey? Uh, maybe it's Aish, probably Joey. They said that the intro to Wind Waker is actually a pretty good test of the capabilities because as the intro plays, it's... It's running in the game engine, and as it plays, you can see if it stutters. So let's just see. I don't know. It seems silky smooth to me. And that beautiful screen. The vibrant colors. I really like it. I really like the colors on this. Alright, let's try PlayStation 2. So I got God of War loaded. 
and I wanted to go to the settings here just to show you, Ambernick already shipped it with underclocking set up, and so I mean it ostensibly should run fine right out of the box. So we'll see. Got to skip through all these cutscenes. I'll get back to you when the cutscenes are over. It looks really good, and honestly, when you get some custom firmware on here, that'll uh, kind of speed things up even a little bit more. Whew, sky's the limit with this sucker. Yep, sure. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna get you. Kratos is mad. But just overall for PS2, if you want to play a couple, you know, specific PS2 JRPGs, go nuts. That might be a good option. Just his chipset in general. It's, it'll play a little bit of GameCube, a little bit of PS2, but not all. If you really want to play PS2 on here, you might be disappointed because I don't know. What if what if your favorite game just just doesn't run? I will say though, if if you really want this form factor, you really want this chipset, you really like the price, go on to our Discord and find the compatibility list. There's a RP3 Plus compatibility list, which should serve you just to be a generic T618 compatibility list. And if your favorite games are on there and they play well, then you know that's an extra bonus to get it. I wouldn't say buy this so you can play all the PS2 and all the GameCubes because you're never going to play it on here, even with enhancements to the software and more custom firmware, you're never gonna be able to play all of them on here. So it's kind of a cool bonus, kind of half the library, slower games, less graphically intensive games will run. If you're willing to make some sacrifices with resolution um, and you can handle slowness, you'll be able to play more than 50% than maybe, but mm-hmm, mm, eh. N64 should have no problem on here. And it's one of those situations again where the screen is, is very ideally suited for it. You can run it at, you know, upscale and I mean, it's just, wow. Wow, that looks really beautiful. I mean, wow, this <laughs> this looks great. This would be a really cool machine to play N64 on. It can do a lot more than just N64, but, ah, get off those things. But it's it seems to be really adroit at N64. No slowdowns. Smooth, buttery smooth. Beautiful screen. Whee! Hall stick over here is just sensitive enough. Yeah. It would be really fun to play N64 on here. And with the ergonomics, you could play N64 on here for a while. Because, uh, my hands feel great holding this. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I like it. The ergonomics, the processing ability, the upscaling, everything about this. The beautiful screen, the aspect ratio of the screen, everything about this makes this a really good N64 machine. Well, up next we have some PSP, which for whatever reason just starts out stretched. And it's not it's not looking good so what you can do is go to the settings go to where are we at graphics so you go into display layout editor you can turn it from auto scaling to uh, partial stretch let's try partial stretch let's see if that looks better yeah I got some bars on the top but it looks a little better this isn't an ideal PSP machine to begin with just because of the screen size but you can make it a little better Crap. Now, this is an Android device and it has Google Play. And Ambernick has had a kind of a spotty history with these buttons working with Android games. So I downloaded Horizon Chase and we're gonna see how she does. Let's just let's just do World Tour. And look, I'm pressing R2 and it's doing something. It's being recognized. How about that? Eh, came in third. That's okay. They have fixed the Android controller issue. And, uh, the last thing you can kind of do here. This is a little sneaky sneaky. Conceivably, you could play Starfield on here. By the end of the week. Wouldn't that be dumb? But also neat. Now, you, you don't use all the available real estate. And this might not be, like, the best way to do things. But, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing, ah, not very well. I'm playing Jedi Survivor on my 405V. Text is hard to read, but, I mean, I'm, I'm playing... Ah, crap! Obviously, this isn't ideal with the aspect ratio for these games that are designed for a widescreen monitor or TV, but just the notion you can play some of these games on Game Pass on here, which is, I don't know, kind of neat. I kind of like that as an idea. Just the notion that in a couple of days I could be playing Starfield on here, and probably not having the best time of my life, but just that I could do it is funny to me. 
and it's available because it has Google Play Store. You download all your stuff from Android, and most importantly of all, all your buttons work, as you saw when I was struggling to fight as a Jedi. Well, Gary, I think we've we've pushed this as far as we can for our first impressions. So, what did we learn? We learned that the 405V is an ergonomic dream with a beautiful four inch screen that's 640 by 480 and it's ideally suited for all your classic and not so classic four by three systems. Now, 3DS, it might be able to play some of the games, but they don't look great on there. PSP, kind of the same deal. Game Boy Advance, you can kind of fudge it, but everything else runs great. We already know what the chipset can do. We already have seen it in action. We know custom firmware will be available immediately. And we also know it will be launching at the same time as this video for $130 for the first 48 hours and only $138 after that. Now that doesn't include shipping, but that's still a pretty good deal considering the amount of power you're getting, the ergonomics you're getting, the beautiful screen you're getting, the potential wood grain you're getting, uh, a cooling unit that's not doing too much. Uh, I think it, it's right behind the screen, so maybe it's there just to make sure the screen doesn't melt or fall out. But uh, you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot for 130 or 140 bucks. This is a handheld that starts to kind of blur the line between, oh wow, what a budget gem, and oh wow, what a budget high performance device. At $130, you're within, you know, 30 bucks of the RGB 10 Max 3, which has, you know, far less performance and, and its whole myriad of issues we've all encountered. You're a little bit more expensive than some of the budget Pow Kitty models like the X55 or the uh, RK2023. Now, if that 30 or $40 is, is make or break for you, yeah, okay, that's 30 or 40 bucks and that's a big deal. But... If you're looking to spend between 100 and 150 and you don't care if you have that 30 or $40 wiggle room, now you start thinking, do I want to get something that won't play any PlayStation 2 or GameCube? Or do I want to spend a little bit more and get something I can play Wind Waker on? Or God of War? Or pretty much any JRPG, you know, with the normal exclusions. And, uh, yeah, it starts, it starts to get a little more interesting, right? Now, when the... T618 stuff came out and it was closer to 200, you'd say, yeah, there's a firm delineation. But 130? Huh? Huh? Getting closer. Getting closer. My first impressions are, wow, I like it. I thought it would be too big, but it fits really well in the hand. At least for me. I thought it might be too thick. No, because your fingers just kind of naturally rest behind it. Uh, the only gripe really I have is that the shoulder buttons, which are redesigned to, I guess, be more ergonomic, for me at least, I keep, I keep tapping the, the R1 and the L1 when I'm in menus, which is kind of aggravating, but maybe that's just the way I'm holding it. Uh, another issue, if you want to call it the issue, it's the same with the 405M, is that this D-pad's a little mushy. I really don't notice it unless I'm trying to do some high-precision stuff or sometimes in menus, but what I'm talking about is you can hold down the, the bottom and rock back and forth, and you're, you're getting left and right inputs, which isn't ideal, but... A lot of times if I'm pressing down, I'm just pressing down, right? If I'm just trying to press down, it's not triggering. If I press down over here, yeah, that's where it triggers. If I'm not square, but I, I, it doesn't happen to me a lot. And it's an easy fix. You just take it apart and put some electrical tape over the contacts. So it's not hitting down and right or down and left or whatever. Shouldn't have to do that. Uh, Ambernick used to have just top of the line D-pads. I don't know why they've done it in the last two releases, but it's still there. They did fix the shoulder buttons not being detected in Android mode, which is neat. Yeah, I really like it. It looks kind of odd, but guess what? When you're playing it, you don't see anything besides the screen, you know? If you want it as a display piece and you go, Ew, that's gross. I don't like that it's slightly curved. That's fine. That's your opinion. If you're going to put it up on a shelf, and you might not want to look at it. But if you're going to play it, hmm, 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 I like it. Uh, I, do, I do like the Ambernick, and I guess... Retroid with the RP2S that's coming at some point. It, uh, it, it might get here before Christmas. But Ambernick especially, they've, they've kind of just really gone with this, hey, this worked, people like it, let's just beef it up a little bit. And to the point where, where it's, it's almost like this is an homage to this. There's so many similarities. But there's enough that's new. There's enough that's different. There's this curvature there. Love it or leave it. It's, you know, it's 
it's ergonomic. And I like it. So I guess my first impressions is this has the potential to be a game changer in the sense of price versus performance compared to some of the other stuff. Now, maybe it's not your cup of tea, but you still might benefit because maybe some of these other companies go, oh, crap, we can't sell this whatever for 115 anymore because everyone will say, go pound salt. I'm going to spend 15 more bucks and get the more powerful one. So it might kind of shake up the, the prices, maybe not direct from companies, but you never know with drop shippers. So anyway, you can buy this today as soon as you're done watching this video, or maybe you already bought it and you're watching the video to verify that, yes, I made a good decision. And if you don't already have a T16 and you don't already have a vertical one, this could be the one for you. If you, uh, if you love that vertical form factor, go for it. If you already have like five T618s, eh, you might have a problem. And, uh, that problem will probably compel you to buy this, but you, 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 don't, you don't need it if you already have more than one T618. But there are those of us out there who have three to, to four of them, but this isn't about me, okay? This isn't about me. I don't know why this, I don't know, I don't know when this became an inquisition. <sighs> Next thing I know, people are going to be hanging a banner. We love you, Zoo. You have a problem. But anyway, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Uh, take care of your handhelds. And, uh, if you're looking for a T618, you can take care of your wallet because this guy is pretty cheap compared to some of the other ones. And it's got good performance, and you know custom firmware is coming for it. So hmm, hmm, hmm. stay tuned. Me and the rest of the fellas, we're going to probably do four or five more videos about this. You know how we do these things. Maybe some shorts. You never know. But just stay tuned for full Team Retro Handhelds coverage. And I'm going to go edit this because I just got this, and I want to get it out before it goes for sale. So I'll see everyone later. Gary, put the kettle on, because it's going to be a long night.